Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. It's Monday night, y'all. Time to get filled with light. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet. Thanks for the marvel of technology. I'm coming at you live from my little old guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, and you are listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and Reinforcement, Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. Check out this, y'all. Coming to Memphis, Metaphysics returns to Memphis August 5th and 6th at the Agra Center International with the Memphis Metaphysical Fair. I'm going to be there. I'm going to do a talk, and I'm also going to have a booth there uh, for meet and greet. Not sure exactly what my time slot for the talk presentation is going to be, but uh, you can check in with me in in the future, and or I'm going to be announcing here. You can bet on that. The Memphis Metaphysical Fair will play host to psychic mediums, tarot card readers, crystal and stone healers, and vendors, Native American motif, paranormal investigating, and 20 workshops over the two days, August 5th and 6th. Agri Center International, Memphis, Tennessee, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. $10.00 for a one-day adult pass and 16 for the weekend pass military discounts available children under 12 are free so yeah you can bring your little rugrats awesome you know they're going to dig all the really cool stones and (laughs) all that kind of stuff workshops range from no money at all to ten dollars each vending booths are still available visit memphismetaphysical.com for more information um i've been Advertising, advertising, announcing, promoting uh, a fundraiser that we're doing for Kenneth Pass, who was a recent guest on Center of Light Radio. If you go to centerflightradio.com, let the page settle. There's lots of little moving parts. <clears throat> you'll see a flying saucer whiz across the screen. When it settles, you'll see a donate button. The reason for this is um, when Kenneth was on Center of Light Radio, he mentioned that uh, hanging out with these aliens for the time that he did. They brought him back 10,000 years and brought them back to his current timeline. And Kenneth has been dealing with this all of his life. He wants to go back to Arizona. While he was with the aliens, one of them pissed him off. And he hid some of the alien technology. Now, this happened 10,000 years ago. And he wants to go find this technology. And he wants to bring it to the Hopi and the Pueb or the and or the Pueblo because they know what to do with it and they are the ones that can be responsible in handling such technology. He does not want the extraterrestrials to have it. So the gig is we're trying to raise five hundred dollars to get Kenneth to Arizona on a bus, um, have some food to eat, and so that when he does come back, we can have him uh, come back on Center of Light Radio for a part two interview, and he can tell us you know what went down. So centerflyradio.com, you'll see a donate button underneath the flying saucer, like five, ten bucks. Man, with the size of listening on it we have, it shouldn't take much. You can bet I am going to contribute to that as well. Um, also want to make an announcement that uh, Center of Light Radio, as well as Inception Radio Network, we're going into some technology changes. Skype is uh, is upgrading, and so are we, because we want to bring you the the most amazing audio, hopefully in the future, the most amazing video to accompany that. Center of Light Radio is all about quality. So we ask that you bear that in mind and hang tight with us as we go through the future shows until we get this all nicely tight and dialed in. And now it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio business. If you want to call into the show today, dial 888-919-2355, triple eight nine one nine two three five five to speak to myself or Miss Glendis Morales, who is an intuitive healer, counselor, spiritual teacher, and modern shaman. Glendis Morales will share with Center of Light Radio her personal spiritual development, the New Earth Partnerships, Cosmic Roots, and the Future of Humankind. Glendis is a natural-born, self-taught healer. She incarnated with the knowledge and understanding of human consciousness through many lifetime experiences as a healer, ascendant master, oracle, seer, 
and teacher. Her mission is one of unity, awakening, and raising human consciousness through mastery of oneself. Until the age of 25, was asleep in the illusion of this now reality, having forgotten her everlasting connection to high realms and her higher self. Then one day, she spontaneously experienced what she calls which she likes to call a personal conscious re- consciousness rebirth. After having successfully integrated her higher self, she now facilitates others to do the same through her energetic healing techniques and teachings. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Ms. Glendis Morales. Hi, Keith. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It. Partnerships and spiritual development and cosmic roots and the future mm-hmm. of humankind. Which one of these subjects would you like to move in first? Well, I heard you talk about aliens, so why not start cosmic roots? <laughs> Let's dig that. <laughs> yeah. So would this be the cosmic roots? Yes. Yes. Um, I wanted to talk about a little bit about my own cosmic roots and the connection I've been having recently. Some of my guides, some of new doors are opening up. Um, and how are the and changing due to these new openings? These are brand new things happening, new, new beautiful souls coming into into the earth, helping us to create, to, you know, kind of save mankind from all these things happening in the ethereal world. Um, some people know, some people don't know. Um, so I don't know. Uh, that's what I want to touch on. Give a little bit of the messages they're telling me to spread around. So do you, you obviously, if you are integrated with your higher self, you know a lot about your connection. Is there a certain star group that you can mention to us or if that's even important or just for the sake of novelty um, that you are okay. connected with and what they might be imparting? Um, I'm connected to the Pleiadians. I remember my last lifetime before coming to Earth in the play eights for sure i remember clearly then i have arturus in my background and i also have another dimensions not in this galaxy and other galaxies uh which live in a different type of frequency um they have told me their names but i don't really grasp because when it comes to that um so far away sometimes language like I, you and i are speaking becomes kind of like uh impersonal so it's more of like a different energy feeling but uh, definitely pleiadian I am definitely like maybe 80% Pleiadian, I'll say. Some years ago, Glendis, when I was, mm, let's say this is about 10, 12, maybe, no, longer than that. But some years ago, <laughs> <laughs> um, a oh. Pleiadian girl, a sister energy, she would visit mm-hmm. me frequently. Her name was Beck, B-E-Q. Mm. And it's important that I had the spelling right. Um, B-E-Q, her name was Beck. And she was uh, the kind of energy that would come poke me and wake me up and just fun and just joked around a lot. Uh, I remember her clearly. I haven't seen her in many years. Uh, you don't know her, do you? <laughs> well, that's your personal. That's your personal star. <laughs> <laughs> and so, is this a, for you? Is this when you want to reconnect with your essence of being? This re- related to this cosmic group. Is it just a matter of a simple awareness shift? Is this with you all the time? Is this something you have to hunker down in meditation t- to dial the phone to make the connection, or is it just simply a shift for you? Well. To me, it's a shift and it's an awareness. It's a little bit of everything because since I'm a work, I'm very connected to um, my higher, let's say my higher templates, which, you know, they're also lower, higher, inner, outer, but meaning higher templates from cosmic roots, what I call cosmic roots. And these templates lead you to information. And obviously, there's many ways to get it, depending on the person. I am usually connected to my DNA, and I'm aware of what is in my DNA because I work on that. I mean, that's what I do for a living. So I'm able to download and to obtain information for it and about it and then discern what it is and, you know, receive guidance about it. But it depends on the person. Also, if you have never spoken to your cosmic roots, so your cosmic guides, Maybe you want to sit in meditation and tell them to send you a signal, to send you a way to contact them, something specific. Um, and if you set that intention out there, even if you not, might not be intuitive or if you're not like a healer, you know, you can still, you will receive the message and the connection because they're, they're, they're 
the the line between them and us is so thin right now that if you just set that intention and speak what you want, it will manifest into your life, into your reality really quickly. So this was a past life experience, even though this is an ongoing experience for you, uh, obviously, I'm assuming this was a past life when you were embodied there as your primary incarnation. Now, I'm sure if, you know, being in doubt as you are, you can probably shift your awareness to that life and be in that body. But you did have a life there to where that was your primary focus. How long ago could we maybe say this was some lifetimes ago or recent or? No, this was lifetimes ago. This was, oh, um, I'll say, okay, in human years, maybe more than 4,000 years ago, even more. There's not really a time and space that I can relate, that I can tell you to measure between human and um, this, the quantum feel. Um, but definitely, it was my last lifetime before 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, I remember being in Jerusalem. So before that, I'll say I spent some time in the Pleiades, in one of the stars in the Pleiades. And then I decided, okay, it's time to go back, and then I came back. So I can tell you, that's 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go back home on vacation, say hi to the family? (laughs) Well, you know what I've been doing lately? I've been telling them, I want to see you guys here for us. (laughs) <laughs> I'm tired traveling. So I just asked them to manifest themselves into the earth now. It's so much easier. Well, that just... being said, we were talking <laughs> we were talking about these cosmic roots. Is there anything of your cosmic roots that you want to share to before we cross fade into another subject? Because one of the other subjects that you have um, in fact, they're all part of, they all just dovetail into each other, is spiritual yeah. development. Then we have the New Earth Partnership. So that was yeah. going to be my next question. This is where the bridge starts happening between not only you, but for the many out there who are aware of other lifetimes or even present time awareness with others galactically. What is the handshake deal for these New Earth Partnerships with the cosmic? Uh, with the cosmic, yes. Um I call them divine partnerships. Now they're just cosmic partnerships. These are new souls coming into bodies. I'm not saying they're birth. I'm saying they're just coming into the body. They could be walking, not walking. They're just into new bodies, new human bodies, and they are here to help us shift the timeline of Earth to a higher frequency, to a higher perspective, to a better man of humanity. Okay. Um, This is why I wanted to touch bases on this. These relationships, partnerships, are really based on true ancient love. It's true, true love. Beyond unconditional love, beyond any type of consciousness, Christ consciousness, beyond anything I have ever experienced, these partnerships are based on true, honest, honoring love of the divine feminine and masculine. But um, it's about unity of course so you know this and it's about saving humanity i want to ask you this i uh, i often put this question to my guests a lot of spiritual people a lot of spiritual teachers we all share the idea of what love is but i want to hear it from you what is the true the truth the definition the depth of what real love that you're describing what is it well they call it true love and um, it comes first, they have given me certain guidelines on how to shift it from what I've known to be love. And um, it, it's a mix between human, human, like your human DNA and your cosmic DNA. This is the only way I can describe it. When these two things merge and your, let's call it your human growth or development, okay? Like the things you're supposed to do for your humanity side. Uh, you get like a head start on it and you kind of advance on them. Then this merging of these two frequencies, this, this DNA frequencies that start to happen. And then you start feeling this true sense of love from a point of, um, I call it the silver lining, which is neither there or there or here. There's n- n- within the duality of everything and at the point of merging. So, um, To me, the way I experience it, because it's pretty much especially designed for the person in your your DNA, um, is based on honesty and truth, truth, a lot of truth, a lot of um, self-truth, self-respect towards yourself, so then you can shift it towards 
love, what you would call unconditional love, conditional love, duality, and then experience as one, as one, but still living your humanity. Are we an experiment, a divine experiment? <laughs> it's, it's seriously, oh because God. I've always known, and even in my own intuition, um, that nothing like this humanity has ever been done before with the idea of embodying that the human race or the prototype or the gig yeah, to yeah. become the embodiments of the highest of high oh my gosh it's funny you say that because um it is it is it is started as an experiment uh and now it's a very i mean now it's just something that not even them can like not even our brothers and sisters can um let go of because we're so important and the the future of this planet of this matrix is taking a different turn a different shift that nobody has ever seen before what would no that one be knows. um it's just well the way they described it to me there was a different timelines okay there's always different timelines possibilities and depending on the collective consciousness this the timelines shift to one side or the other to me, for a lot of people right now, it's about transcending duality and understanding themselves in duality, in the acceptance of that in the matrix, but also becoming your own true manifest or co-creator. That's what I call it. Okay. And um, understanding your human design. All right. So then we can, as a collective, if we desire so, shift humanity from a place of um, just humans and aliens to a place of to a plane where we all won and we all are brothers and sisters and we accept our cosmic roots because a lot of people don't accept they have a different dna than the one that is just on you know two strands or one percent human or two percent human that to me anyways I, I love your reference always to the the matrix and even the movie if you if you're familiar with the matrix at yeah. the end when neo became illumined and i really really love what you said you said when you can accept who you are in duality is when you will begin to transcend the duality. So that's becoming the wholeness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's becoming one with the matrix and not wanting to be out of a matrix or not wanting to uh, be asleep in it and sleep in it or delete right. it or, yeah. or destroy it. It's pretty much you learn your place in it and you learn how to be your own self. And sovereignty starts to happen when that happens. And um, I'm sure the more you stand there, I call it, like I said, it's a silver lining. It's in the center of duality. And there's a lot of pulling and pushing, and you can, you're going to feel that inside of you. Um, and that, in my case, required me to uh, enter a different a space of willpower to me so that was my that is my human growth and development be able to use my willpower my willpower to the extent to the intensity that i'm supposed to use it um and that is the test and many people will have different people will have different tests when they're getting that pull and tug because they will get it <laughs> Vince, we're at the bottom of the hour would you give out your contact information so our listening audience can find more about you and the cosmic work that you are doing darling of course. Um, again, my name is Glennis Morales, and my phone number is 786-512-2945. And uh, my website, if you guys want to hear more about it, listen to it or read it, is www.luminicahealing.com. Again, luminica, L-U-M-I-N-I-C-A, healing.com. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works. You can bet 
All you have to do is contact me, Keith Anthony Blanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. For my listening audience out there, trust me when I tell you, Glennis is the real deal. <laughs> I can feel it. Uh, trust me, I can feel it. So you had mentioned just before the uh, the break of your announcement, um, you mentioned willpower. Yeah. I want to talk about will power, and you had mentioned also that it you find yourself in a new space, a different space. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned the application of your willpower. What is it like in that place that you described to use? willpower because i know what it's like for me and with the awareness i have sometimes i have to push i have Uh, to push my will my passion i'd have to use my passion so that would be the aggressive that would be the push and then sometimes when i use my my willpower i have to use the passive which would be the sincerity are you saying that when uh, you go to that new place it's an amalgamation of both that you put some force behind it to guarantee absolutely guarantee because the level of knowing one has, yeah, but it, how does that work for you when you're in that space? Mm, grace. <laughs> <laughs> I have gone through passion, pull and tug. I have gone through pushing. I have gone through uh, emotional. I have gone through all these, um, you know, human conditionings and, and my human, again, my human factor. And bottom line, it came down to gracefully. The only way you can do it, at least for me, is to use my willpower gracefully. It's just the essence, part of the essence of who I am and part of the essence that I have not um, fully um, <laughs> agreed to use. <laughs> so I'm working on that now. That is my next step. Uh, and also part of it is accepting my darkness to the extent of becoming my, my darkness. Uh, I used to get very upset about people not understanding me in my darkness not accepting me on it and always wanting me to be in the space of light and love. And the more I fight it and I would fight it and get angry about it and get upset because I, was, I felt obviously misunderstood uh, in that higher place, um, just accepting my darkness and being able to use it towards my advantage because it's still part of who we are. It's again, that duality. Yeah. It's like, it's still part of who we are, but, in an illumined sense. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's primitive. It's very, I mean, it's very primitive and very yeah. real. And um, we want to, a lot of, you know, if, if, if we're not in that balanced state, uh, your human factor, you still want to pull one way more than the other. Um, so again, it, uh, as we expand, and we, we are continuously expanding because this new energy, this new frequency is about expansion, not contracting. We're not, uh, to me anyways, it's not any more expanding and contracting. It's just about from the point where I am, as I am, expanding from there on, um, not going back and forth. Um, that's where we find, that's to me was where I found a new sense of love, uh, a deeper sense of love um, in the merging of my humanity and my cosmic roots as union. Uh, so... It all depends on the person's how do they how do they um, show themselves into the dark and how do they see themselves in the dark of them of themselves. So speaking more about the partnerships, the Earth partnerships with the galactic. Uh-huh. How many people are we shaking hands with? Is it too many to count, or is it just a few, like seven? No. Uh- Imagine. I mean, that are directly involved. I know there, I know there are a lot of them that, like moths, they come to the light. They, they're curious about what's happening here because, they one, they know it's going to affect the entire universe. Well, I can, what I can tell you is that I work with um, five races that form part of a galaxy outside this galaxy. And within them, there are a lot of worlds. Um, if you can imagine a cube... You can fit it all in a cube. That's how they've shown it to me. Um, and I'm part of this, um, hello, I'm part of this nation, okay, uh, that is here to secure the success of, let's just say, shifting the earth, shifting the earth into a higher, a higher frequency, a higher vision, okay? So that, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> does, our, does our prognosis look good? 
Um, yes, to me it does. I do need. I, I, I guess what they're asking is for true, honest help. I have been. Um, I've been receiving, or I've been kind of like presented with um, help that is not a hundred percent genuine, and I guess that's what they're. Uh, that's what we're needing right now. Uh, people that are committed to dedicate themselves to this type of work and um, and do whatever it takes through their willpower to make it happen and to trust, 100% trust their inner guidance. You and I walk very similar paths. Um, <laughs> towards what I do, I am committed. I wake up in the morning, as soon as I wake up, I, the first thing I do is sit in this chair and I sit in this chair all day long and I'm committed. Um, and I, I, over the period of my life to where I'm at now, I've learned how to trust, and it's really not a method that's involved. It's truly just learning to let it all go, all of it, everything, 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 letting it go and letting it be as it is, and trust that it's going to work out. And even if it doesn't work out, still in the trusting of it, as it would previously have been perceived as not working out somehow there's a diamond in there still that it is what it's supposed to be and so i'm at the place in my life now that i'm really not doing anything except exactly what i want to do and it seems like everywhere i go every place uh, every corner i turn there's always something being handed to me to ex not only expand me but to expand the work that i'm doing I agree. That is part of, um, that's the gift that you receive for allowing trust to come into your life. It happens to me all the time. The moment I decide not to follow that path, then I encounter some roadblock and then I have to test. They test me and I test myself again and again until I get it 100%. Uh, because again, we are human. We have that human factor, you know, still in us. Um, so um, I, I find that beautiful that you're following your intuition. <laughs> To the extent of your of your gut feeling and all the way in, because um, it's t to me it takes a lion's heart to do that. Uh, there's valor, there's presence, um, there's self confidence, uh, understanding of a higher higher plan, of a higher perspective, um, and also understanding that you are taken care of. You will always be taken care of. Mm -hmm. My connection to this particular being, it's been many years, to, to Nucleus 8, an alien-human hybrid friend of mine. You had mentioned something about there are worlds within worlds. He told me once when we were hanging out, this, is, this was 14, oh God, 17, 18 years ago, whatever. We were hanging out, he says, Keith, there are beings on our planetary station. They are called mothers. They're, these are the good grays. But they're called mothers. And he says their consciousness is as such that they can pull you into their bodies, your consciousness into the bo their bodies, and an, an entire new universe will open up. Are you familiar with this kind of consciousness movement? Yeah, I call them, I call them because yeah, I call it creatrix. They are creatrix. They are creatrix, and they are the ones in charge of creating and manifesting worlds. Um, and to me, they're, to me, at least to me, because of my state of awareness, they're neither male, male or female. They are pretty much, um, it's, let's just say they're kind of like the Holy Spirit manifested in body. Uh, yeah, they're not called mother because they're female. They're called mother because, because they are the ones that bring things forth. Yeah, I just want to like <laughs> make sure people know because we all have this understanding of you know this understanding in our heads of what mother is, but truly, I the way they presented it to me is called creatrix, and actually, um, at least for me, in the level that I am, my awareness and the gifts that I have, they, I have been allowed to receive, um, you can become creatrix embodied if you're able to put yourself in that place of. Um, love for others <laughs> uh, that you can manifest and create for them um, whatever it is that they desire from a, obviously from a pure heart that is actually something that i've been doing mm -hmm. mm -hmm. wow i'm just taking this all in because cosmic dialogue <laughs> is my absolute <laughs> favorite 
So, Glennis, in your level of awareness, and I think I've asked this of you before, what is it like to be you? I think this is important for those people who might be, quote, newbies on the spiritual path, and that might help motivate them other than, well, I'm spiritual because it's hip, and I'm spiritual because they may get a bone thrown to me once in a while, that the reason for becoming expanded and illumined as a spiritual being is because... It's magical. <laughs> right. It's, for, it's magical. It's magical. It's just magical. I cannot, I don't have any other way to express it. I mean, it's just magical to be, you know, where I am right now. And the human, and like, I just want to clarify, uh, this doesn't mean that there is perfection in everything, because there is, again. But um, I have learned to take risks for these things that are unseen for so many people. And the human factor, hum, hu, the illumination factor, uh, that is something that, we, to me, we can leave aside because we are already, already illuminated as we are. It doesn't matter your state of consciousness. You already are as you are illuminated. Uh, because you wake up every day, you look at the sun. And if you don't look at the sun, you look at the moon. So you are already there in contact with everything that is. The human factor, you cannot leave that behind. We cannot let go of the human factor 100%. We have to shift it into a higher state of awareness to oneself, to you, for you. It doesn't matter what other people say. It's just about you. Okay, so that ma it's just pure magic. It's being a creator manifester and being actually aware of your, of your own sovereignty over your world whatever that is. And then you can shift into politics and this and that, and you can take it in different levels, but pretty much it's just about you. So in other words, instead of letting the human condition control who you are, when you become expanded, then you, ha then you have the influence to change things on this plateau. <laughs> you're magical. It's never. It's all a lie. You, your human condition <laughs> <You're right. laughs> it has never really... Uh, there is never a control issue. It's just a lie. It was like it was like a switch that was waiting for you to say, "Oh yeah, this is what it was." Oof. And and just set intention. Said like, "I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it." And you know, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up. Just don't give up. Whatever some, everybody says, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Some people love the belief that there's a lot of spiritual work to do. And I agree with that. There's, there's work to do. Work implying uh, awareness expansion. To me, awareness expansion is everything. You know, for the listening audience out there, try it now. Uh, whatever's in front of you, look at it. And just look at it and be aware that it's there, right? And keep looking at it. Now, while you're still looking at whatever it is you're looking at, be aware of what's on the side of you without turning your head. Be aware of what's on the other side of without turning your head. Be aware of what's behind you. You can feel it. You can even see it through your third eye. It's there. I have no doubt that you can see it, and I know that you know it. <laughs> and so it's about awareness expansion. And the more you keep doing this, the bigger you get, like blowing into a balloon. So, yes, there's work involved. But would you say the work really, no matter what the work is, all of that comes right back to accepting yourself? Yes. But also, to me, it's about love. I cannot express this enough. Acceptance doesn't come until you do until there is tr love, love to care enough to accept yourself. And because you in that is all the work that you could have done the long way, but this would be the shorter way. <laughs> yes, but love is all that is as it is, and it's okay to not you know it's okay it's, it's okay for the mind the mind is perfect now our hearts need to be aligned to me I, I it's like right now i'm not at the point that i don't want to go tilt one you know one side or the other is you know neutrality is always a good option but love love when you look at someone's eyes and you look at them deep enough to move their soul and you know that they're inside that soul there is 100 percent. there's just pure love then you know that that person is already in the place that they need to be, how they need to be. There's nothing else to shift, change. It's just well as it is. And anyways, that's how I see it now.
<laughs> different yeah totally yeah cause, because when you can make a connection through the eyes or anyway but let's just use the eyes for now and yeah, yeah. you're in your space you are in your essence and if you can make connection with someone in their eyes while you are in their essence their soul will begin to vibrate to the same harmonic as you are uh from the chat room don danny asked the question does glendis think artificial consciousness can we can we ever reach it or is it a product of living only no artificial of course it's, it's totally 100 percent true it's 100 percent true we are living in a matrix which is 100 percent artificial bingo the matrix, <laughs> yeah it's like there's the, the 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 what gives it the 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 the, the feel the, that is in our dna we are the ones holding the matrix we are the ones feeding the matrix and feeding the this mother that they called you know the gaia all these names she is we are her so we are the ones upholding it the moment we disconnect from the, the this intelligence the moment that it, it just it loses its power so pretty much it's just like a computer if you think about it when you take it to those terms as the, he's asking me it's just a computer it's just mainly a computer yeah wow I like that. you know and yeah. using that analogy of computer we can liken that to uh, if you want to sign in to the instead of the internet the internet <laughs> You have to sign in with this with your screen name, and you you do that by whatever your actual name is. But the password is meditate, or the password is responsibility. And so once you get logged into the internet service or sole provider, then we can begin to browse all the different cosmic sites while we're out there or in there rather. And but our past lives can be. It relates to the idea that, you know, our, we, we didn't protect ourselves in many, many of those lives. I mean, viruses and hackers, and it always made us crash, so to speak. So we had to reboot or be reborn. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's all the same idea playing mm -hmm. itself out on multiple levels, yes? DNA is all about, um, to me, DNA is all about numbers. It's all about um um beyond it's like just numbers codes uh this is to me our dna because we live in a matrix created by you know numbers and energy energy that can be transformed into whatever we have right now which is codes to me that's how i see it um our only advantage is we have we in our dna we have been encoded with this thing that they call the uh the black mass like it's just void and in the void of it all, then things are different. Yeah. So you start you start seeing reality in a different level, in a different perspective. Uh, and you start understanding why is it that you're the creator of all of this? Why are we the creators of artificial intelligence, of anything that is out there, of, you know, all these implants, all these things? We are the creators in body. And I cannot express that, that enough because that gives you a sense of responsibility, like you said, mm. it, in, in and out of it. It doesn't matter if you're on your phone or not, you, if you're driving, you're still connected to a matrix. You're still connected to uh, a, a, an automobile that is probably most of the times it's actually like, you know, it's pretty much a computer. So we're still in that all the time, continuously. And when you go outside and you sit with the trees, if you see the perspective of the trees, it's still numbers. It's still the same. And we are the ones, again, feeding it. We're feeding it with our energy, with our passion, with our creation, with our sense of self, with our hearts. So every thought is a creation. Every thought Here, is a here's, creation. A far, here's a far out, far in question for you. Uh, it sounds like a novel idea, but I think there might be a point in it. I'm channeling it as I <laughs> talk to I you. Uh, if everything is numbers, we have binary code, we have ones and zeros, zeros and ones, and it depends on the order it creates this particular result. Same with DNA. That being said, um, Glennis Morales goes inside, or she lives inside, um, and we know that certain codes create a certain result. Is there any codes that you can share with us <laughs> that we could use in meditation i mean i mean think about it visualization is a very very powerful thing if you visualize you want a new ferrari and you do it very well a new ferrari is going to show up in your life so if glennis morales or anyone knows a certain number combination or a certain code 
then in meditation, if you recite that order of digits and that code, could you bring about said manifestation? Makes sense to me. What are your thoughts? I can give you I can give you the beginning because um, I can give you the beginning. I can sense I can use a door that that's the one that you're tapping into and I can give you the codes to that door and then you can just repeat it three times and I can I do not know what comes out of that door for the specific person since that's their creation. But I can give you the key to open that door. That's why you're asking me. <laughs> I am. I'm actually, yeah, any codes you can give us, uh, you know, that we can recite well, in a, as a mantra, actually. Um, it all re- Okay, first, intention is extremely important. You have to have the heartfelt intention, okay? Um, but I'll say 44867. 44867. If you ever decide to repeat that, are you are you there, Keith? <laughs> oh yes, I'm taking it in. You can bet. <laughs> yeah, I, can I right now I'm just downloading it. That key code will lead you to a special place, and that only the message, only whatever it is that you need to use it for, uh, is actually pers- personalized. I would not. It just came to me, so I'm just giving it out as a gift. Um, but it's for each and every person to do whatever it is that they need to do with them. And you bet on it that your guides are in tune with them. So you just have to use it right through, you know, in, a, in the right way. So you're saying this door that you called it is, is a hyperfertile door. And whatever you bring to that door is what you're going to get. It's not Whether you're conscious of it or not. It's quantum. It's beyond quantum. It's not oh. that door. That door is not the type of door you use. It's beyond quantum. It's beyond quantum energy. This type of doors that I'm, I have, I can give you keys to, are long, ta- long travels, like long travels into which your consciousness can coexist at two places or three places at the same time. So if you're not, if you're not an expert at it, if you have not never done, if you haven't done it before, then yes, definitely just sit down with it and see what comes and practice it until you see something different manifesting into your life that it will look like a miracle. But pretty much it's just you using this door to create something different for yourself by you, you making it happen and into the awareness of it. Most people are not aware of what they're manifesting. They do things and they don't know they're the ones doing them. They always like, oh, this person did it, or that was someone else's fault, or maybe that was because, no, no, this is conscious manifestation, and it could be definitely instant if you desire so. If you get any other codes in the future, you can always email them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, will stop, I will start posting the codes and um, I'm, uh, on my website because I do feel there's a need for, for this to, um, to, to be shared. I also will post, I, I've been getting these images, they look like spaceships, you know, they're very, I've been drawing them, and they're very interesting, and maybe looking at them will take you to that door, to that, you know, to that race that will connect you, family, you know, that it would be there, because there's a lot of new, 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 new um, races that are that are here that most people don't know about have no clue i'm talking about this is under the radar this is not like you're you know not at all like your typical races and um they want to stay uh under the radar for a reason you know there's always a reason uh, i'm just allowing i'm just sharing what i'm allowed to share as of right now Glennis, yeah. we're at the top of the hour. We're about to sign off here uh, from the chat room. DD asked a question. How about the code to some lottery numbers? <laughs> oh, my God. I've been working on it, but let me tell you, that is something that needs to be approved by the high highs. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Would you, give, would you leave us with a final thought, dear? Um, just uh, remember you're magical. And whatever you want. It's, it's meant that it's meant to be will happen. Okay, so don't don't stress. Stress is, is, is coming. Stress is coming. There's a lot of stuff going on uh, worldwide, and just stay into the positive side of things for now. Okay, until so the storm passes. That's my prediction. <laughs> Storm is coming. <laughs> I'm glad you, you came on the show today uh, from the chat room. Uh, I like Glenn. It's good guest, Keith. Uh, I want to have you back soon. We get all these, these uh, little kinks worked out. A lot of them have to do with me and learning the system. I'd like to get you back so we can have a real full hour with you. Would that be okay? Of course. I would love to, Keith. 
Uh, love and light here. Everyone, this is Glennis Morales, and you can find her at www.luminicahealing.com. That's L-U-M-I-N-I-C-A healing.com. Next week, my guest is going to be Mr. Ed Stratcher, a uh, big, big time guy out in the field, and he's uh, he's got a lot of powerful information. I'm really looking forward to talking to the gentleman. Keith Anthony Blanchard here, your host, Center of Light Radio, Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I look forward to seeing you here in the chat room if you can make it. We have a lot of fun. We have great people there and all in support of each other. And we all plug into the same consciousness. And guess what? Boom, you expand just like that. You just became how big, however many people in the chat room are because we all connect. And so in that connection, we just begin to swell and get a little bigger and get a little better. Look forward to seeing you. Peace, love, and light. Have a beautiful night. Power and light.